Hello everyone, this is Zibo and welcome to today's Honkai Star Rail video. So as the title suggests, in today's video, we are going to talk about the problems of an E6 Jingyuan, right? So max out a unit as in, in the form of e 6 this unit as well as getting his light cone to super in position 5. So these are the details of my Jingyuan right now. Pretty stacked up, currently my main carry of the account. So uh, level 70, every tracers is maxed out, relics wise maxed out in terms of the levels. So these are, I'll say like the optimal stats of purple gear for now. But I'll definitely upgrade the uh, set to the lightning set and fine tune all the stats required to maximize the potential of this unit. So this one I'll have to wait. So as far as I can see, right, this unit is more than sufficient in doing most of the contents, delivering damage, doing farming, going through simulated universe both 6 both, uh, difficulty 2 on auto mode very sufficient so in today's video let's talk about the issues that you will get even if you have him maxed out at least in terms of the eidolons as well as the light cones itself so i'm not going to talk about like issues like energy deficiency problems because if you have him at e4 energy deficiency is uh, not a problem because the more enemies you're fighting the more hits lightning lock could get in and the faster jingyan regenerates energy so on average i'm able to get my energy fully filled in two or three turns depending on how many enemies i'm fighting so the energy deficiency part is invalid if you do manage to get him to e4 right and in terms of damage perspective i would say that he will definitely beat a cd in most cases but in an aoe centric battle where you're fighting two or three big enemies with thick hp if you get him to e6 this character definitely delivers in terms of damage and obviously if you're fighting lightning weak enemies and multiple of them this character is an excellent breaker in an aoe perspective which could be amazing to keep your team alive because it slows the enemy down allows your characters to do more damage and prevents your enemies from taking action too quickly so those are i'll say like um not a problem for e6 but let's talk about the problems that you encounter for jingyuan if you have him at e6 even if you max him out so the very first problem that I encounter is with regards to crowd control. So the issue with Jingyuan is that number one, Jingyuan is not exactly a very fast character, right? Number two, Lightning Lords get immobilized if Jingyuan is under crowd control. And Lightning Lord speed is not exactly the fastest. So in most cases, what happens is Lightning Lord will be very low in the, the turn order, right? And if the enemy is just slightly faster than Lightning Lord, and is able to immobilize Jingyuan, then the Lightning Lord will completely miss his turn and you lose a huge chunk of DPS from there. So even as an E6, you can't prevent that, right? You can only speed tune your Jingyuan for him to go faster. But as long as you have an enemy minion that's slightly faster than the Lightning Lord, that is able to crop control Jingyuan, then his DPS or majority of these DPS is gonna be sort of rendered useless at least for that turn. Because if I freeze you before the Lightning Lord comes out, the Lightning Lord won't be able to move and this becomes a problem. So there's a few ways you can solve it. So number one is you build a little bit of effect resistance from the relics on Jingyuan so that you don't get controlled so easily. And the other way is have um have a teammate that's able to dispel, right? Natasha, much they are able to dispel. So they're able to dispel all this uh, control effect on Jingyuan and then Lightning Lords gets to go through. But the issue is um, like you have to specifically build your team to prevent such issues and spending one equipment slot or one subset slot on effect resistance might not be a good option for a damage dealer so you want to look at speed you want to look at attack percentage elemental damage boost you want to look at attack numbers or even crit rate and crit damage so like having to build a little bit of effect resistance might not be that good for Jingyuan but this crop control issue will be a problem that you guys will encounter so you can definitely solve it like I mentioned through a dispeller or through building effect resistance or simply praying that you don't get control at all so these are the few issues and this is something that you will definitely encounter and the second problem leading up to uh the speed issue right with Jingyuan being very slow is that because of his very slow speed you have to speed tune him okay so for this part Poké actually did a calculation or rather like a few cm players actually did a calculation so as you speed up the lightning lord by attacking with Jingyuan there's a possibility that the lightning lord will actually outspeed Jingyuan before he takes his second turn so what you got to do is you have to sort of build up a little bit of speed if you have asta if i remember correctly the stat is one two something one two five speed if you don't have asta and you are relying purely on jingyuan it's one four one so for my case if i'm not using asta i have to build at least uh one four one speed so jingyuan's base speed at level 80 is only 99 so i need to find that 42 speeds to build up and for the boots itself it only gives you 25 so speed tuning this character is gonna be a pain in the ass if you want to optimize his damage cycle so what you want to do is 
Jin Yuan use his skill, hit, right? And then Jin Yuan is able to outspeed the Lightning Lord again to hit again and then get enough energy to use the ultimate and then hit so the Lightning Lord deals 10 hit damage without the use of his talent. So that's how you want to optimize his damage output because Lightning Lord is um, his main source of damage output and you want to build up 10 stacks of attack as soon as possible. So speed tuning is going to be really tough and that's why uh, sometimes I do think that running the Musketeer set is really good because it offers speed for this character but then again you're losing the basic attack bonus because uh for Jingyuan itself right you're only using the main skill because you want to build up the attack hits on the lightning lord so if you're building speed then you have to rely on your lightning boots getting a speed main stats and then your other equipments having some speed sub stats which you are able to buff so speed tuning is going to be a pain in the ass for this character even at e6 itself Okay, so the third pointer is not exactly major, but it's just something which I felt after using him. So this character is very simple to play. It is a very linear character that presses his main skill all the time whenever possible. And all you gotta do is make sure this character uses the main skill and ultimate and build up the attack stat on Lightning Lord. So there's no attack priority, there's no targeting priority. Uh, all you gotta do is just press your main skill, he attack everyone. So in this argument, I think you can also say that this character is very easy to play, so you can see this as a pro or con. But if you use this character for quite a while, it gets a bit boring because all he, all he does is just press one button, wait for the ultimate, press the ultimate, and press the main skill again. So it, the cycle repeats, and after a while, you just don't think too much when using this character. So it's very straightforward, very easy to use, but at the same time, being linear and very boring in terms of the kit itself. Okay, so the last pointer is sort of linked to the first pointer with regards to speed tuning. And this is because this problem lies in his ability itself. So for this skill, bonus ability Battalia Crush, it boosts his critical damage by 25% if the Lightning Lord's hit per action is greater or equal to 6. So this boost is major in increasing Jing Yuan's DPS because the crit damage boost affects all the attack count of Lightning Lord. So it's super major. And how you get this 6 attack count is very straightforward. So the Lightning Lord has a base 3 attack count. You go into the battle, you get a 3 bonus from the Technic. And then you use your skill, you get 8. And if you have your ultimate build up, you use your ultimate, you get the 10 full bonus. But if you don't kill the enemy in that turn itself, if you go into the next turn, the talent or the lightning lord will go back to 3 attack count. And then you use your skill, you get 5 attack count. And if your Jing Yuan don't outspeed a lightning lord for a second time, you are not getting 5 attack count and you will be missing on the bonus of this trace itself. So it is super important to speed tune Jing Yuan so he at least overtake a Lightning Lord twice before Lightning Lord attacks. So you get this Battalion Crush bonus. And this is why I say it's a very sad loophole because he's not able to achieve it himself if you don't have him at 1-4 something speed. And yes, you can definitely solve this issue with the likes of Bronya fast forwarding Jing Yuan's action so he's able to use his main skill two times giving you at least six attack in and then getting the bonus from the tracers itself or you can also use Asta which uses the ultimate speed boost for the whole team and then Jing Yuan is able to use his main skill again to get this bonus but it is just quite sad that he's not able to achieve it on his own without any form of speed tuning. So this means that speed tuning is going to be essential for Jing Yuan, depending on who you feel and depending on how you want to build him. So that's something that you have to take note if you are using him at E6 because you want to maximize his ability and this ability itself is just insanely good and you want to get this 6 hit, uh, six hit in all the time. So that is uh, the major problem for him. And yeah, so that's it for this video. And I'm still working on the overall analysis for this character, at least in terms of the editing. So do stay tuned for the video. Remember to like and subscribe to see more. And my take about Jing Yuan is, I don't think I wasted my money investing in this character because a lot of people actually mentioned that Jing Yuan may not be as good as he seems. And I attribute that to Erudition being a problem itself because a lot of people are comparing him to CD right now. So I'm just going to take that comparison. So for CD's case, CD gets a boost if you kill an enemy and then she proceeds to deal even more damage on the second target. Whereas Jing Yuan, he distributes his damage equally across multiple targets. So in the situation where you fight like two big HP monsters or really thick HP monsters, then Jing Yuan will definitely outshine CD in that perspective because CD has to kill somebody in order for her passive to kick in. So there's a lot of ways to argue argue on this one but i'll just attribute this to the issues with erudition unit because erudition unit cannot have a super high base attack if not they'll be crazy good in every other content because if erudition unit deals as much single target damage as the hunt unit 
then like everybody will be using erudition but they can't so their damage per hit is lower but they distribute their damage more equally across the different uh targets and this allows you to sort of uh deal with multiple enemies in a more even fashion so that is something which i think Tingen is definitely better but right now from the game modes itself it's not the case because even for memory of chaos it's one boss and multiple small minions so cd will definitely be a lot better in most of the cases there and Tingen sort of pales in comparison unless you're fighting a lightning weak boss so that is my thought about Tingen. right he has his problems but overall i still think he's an amazing unit and if you do need an aoe unit to sort of uh, help carry you through contents or prepare for future contents then i think he's definitely a good investment so yep that's it for this video thank you very much for watching do remember to like and subscribe to see more and i'll see you guys again in my next video bye guys